Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. It's me, Lauren, and in today's video I'm going to be making a harvest apron for at the allotment. Um, so this apron has a buckle closure but you can make it with a tie as well, literally whatever you choose to do. Um, and yeah, I go through with a brief tutorial um, as to what it is that I am doing. Um, I, If you don't know, I have an allotment YouTube as well. Um, I've been working my little backside off uh, since September last year, which is about nine months now, um, to get it to the point where I might actually be able to start picking some produce soon. So I thought if I'm gonna do that, then I want a harvest apron. And also now that the bulk of the hard work is done at the allotment for this year, so getting the ground ready, making the beds, putting up the polytunnel, you know, all of those things. And it's now just come down to like feeding and watering when I go down to the plot. Um, I tend to be wearing nicer clothes when I go down. So I might just wear my dress that I've got on that day because the weather's warmer rather than like gym leggings and a hard wearing coat and a jumper, which is what I was wearing in the winter. Um, so this will also act as a bit of a protector for my clothes as well. Um, just make sure that I'm not getting things too mucky um, when I'm just popping down there to do my watering either in the morning or the evening. Um, but yeah, so do join me because this was a really fun make and I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, I've got these little, I can't remember what they're called, but they're like clips. They're actually like dog lead clips, um, which is what I bought them for originally. And I've hung them all up here um, so that I can attach tools and whatever else I need to hand. Um, this loop here is for the ties, which I'll show you when I wear this. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed because I've really enjoyed making it. Or I hope you do enjoy because I've really enjoyed making it. Um, but yeah, so let's go. The first thing that I'm going to do is choose my fabric. So my base fabric or my main fabric I've already got. And that is this gorgeous Peter Rabbit fabric. Um, now, a friend of mine was fundraising for um, a marathon that she was doing, um, so she was making bunting, um, and I wanted this bunting specific, or this fabric for my bunting specifically, um, because I love Peter Rabbit, I just think, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I love the illustrations from Peter Rabbit. Um, and then obviously it's got all of these vegetables on it. So I really, really wanted this um, for my allotment. So I purchased this fabric and I will link it down below. I can't quite remember where I got it from. I think it might have been eBay, um, but I'll go through my emails and find it and link it down below. Um, and then I gave her the fabric to make my bunting with. So she made the bunting. Um, obviously I could have done it myself, um, but I wanted to support her fundraising. Um, so I still donated the normal amount for the bunting, um, but I also purchased my own fabric. But yeah, I love Peter Rabbit. I just love the story of Peter Rabbit as well, you know, soothing vegetables off the allotment, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so I bought too much of this fabric in comparison to what she needed for the bunting because I always had it in my mind that I was going to make myself a harvest apron. So it's finally come around to that time that I'm actually going to do it. So this is base fabric. Um, I've got two separate pieces of it because obviously some of it was cut up um, for the bunting and I think I ordered three metres of it. Um, it wasn't too expensive at all and it's a gorgeous cotton as well. I think it's pure cotton. Let me just have a look on the little edge. Um, I don't know if it says. No, it doesn't say. Um, it does say craftcotton.com. Um, but as I said, I'll pop it down below. I'm pretty certain it was um, eBay. Yeah, but it's just, oh, I think it's so adorable. So then I was umming and ahhing about what to do for the inner layer of it um, because you want something quite hard wearing. Obviously, this is cotton, so it's not too bad for hard wearing. It's not really got a stretch or anything like that in it. Um, but I wanted something nice and thick and substantial for the inner layer. Um, so I'm going to be putting my harvest inside the apron. Um, so my first thought was this fabric. And this is like a PVC waterproof, um, what's it called? I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, but yeah, like waterproof fabric. Um, so really hard wearing, um, very plasticky. And also it 
is wiped clean. So if you did put something in your apron and it was mucky or something got squashed like a strawberry or something on the inside, um, then it would just wipe away and it wouldn't go to the outside. However, I was then thinking that's quite difficult to sew with and I do want something machine washable if possible. So, and that one, it does go quite well with that Peter Rabbit fabric, I think. Then I remembered that I had this and don't ask me what I bought this for because I genuinely can't remember, I have no idea. But it's super thick, there's no stretch at all. It's nice and thick and it's really sturdy. Um, is it, it's like a wool is it? Or a tar tartan? I don't know, I don't know what sort of fabric it is. Um, but I've had it in my stash for absolutely years. As I say, I can't remember what I originally bought it for possibly a dog coat um, I would have bought it for but yeah it's not very wide at all let me show you that so that's the width of it so that's my only limiting thing um, is the width of it but I think I'm going to be able to chuck it in the wash um, and this side is probably going to get a bit mucky anyway it's quite a light base uh, like sort of background colour um, and this does obviously it's two patterns and they clash you're not really going to see the liner anyway um, but it does sort of match in their colours, so I think I am going to use this. Although my initial idea was to use this PVC fabric, I think this is going to be better. Um, and I'm going to put together my other pieces that I think I'm going to use for it now, and then basically I'm just going to make it up as I go along. But I'm going to do a waist belt to obviously tie it or fasten it somehow. Um, and then I think I'm going to use a webbing as the base for that to make sure that it's really sturdy um, and then yeah I'm just going to pretty much make it up as I go along in terms of pattern um, and it really can be just whatever you want it to be um, so yeah let, I'm going to give it some thought and then I'll show you what it is that I end up doing so this is where I'm at with my design at the minute excuse my drawing um, I'm not an artist by any means but this is what it's going to look like. Um, so we've got a waist tie, but I'm actually going to do a buckle at the back um, because I've got lots of these to use. And I also have these to make like adjusters. I'm going to use my webbing um, on the inside um, of the waist belt to like strengthen it. Um, and then the outside of that fabric will be the Peter Rabbit um, fabric. And then I'm going to have a couple of loops with these clips like this, just so I can hang things off if need be. Um, this front fabric here will be the sort of tartan plaid fabric, whatever it's called. Um, and then the opposite side of that will be the Peter Rabbit. The, there's going to be a little pocket here, which will be Peter Rabbit with the, um, like I'm going to call it tartan with the tartan fabric as the liner. And then what will happen is I'll have like a drawstring around these two sides like this, meeting in the middle. And then what you'll do is you'll pull those ties at the bottom and attach it up here. Um, I'm still undecided as how I'm gonna do that yet. I haven't really given that much thought. Um, possibly do like another little loop here um, and then I can tie it on because then basically what that will do is it will flip this fabric up so you'll see the Peter Rabbit side which is what I want um, and then this will become like a little basket like a little front basket um, to put all of my produce in so yeah so I'm just going to go and cut that out with the fabric now um, and see how we get on let me show you what I've got now so I've finished cutting out I think that's a scrap piece of fabric um, so I literally just measured it across my body. Um, I used the full width of this fabric. So if you remember, this wasn't very wide. So this is how much I could get out of it. Um, and then I just folded it in half and did a curve at the bottom. Um, and that's it. That's all I did was just fold this fabric in half, curve it. And I wanted that to go from my waist to my knees, um, plus a little bit extra. Then I got my Peter Rabbit fabric and I just traced it, cut it out using the plaid fabric. I then did three inch wide uh, waist tie fabric and 
that was because this fabric here off the top of my head is an inch wide or it might be less than that actually might be three quarters inch wide or half an inch wide even but anyway um that is enough to go around that one that's what I want to do with it is just cover it and then I found the absolute best method of making bias binding now I say that as I'm holding this up to you and it is the wobbliest <laughs> bias binding I've ever seen in my life look at those wonky edges however the method for making it was the absolute best and quickest way and look how much I've got and that hasn't even taken me half an hour to cut out all of those pieces, including make that bias binding. Um, however, the reason that they're such wobbly edges are because I used my electric scissors and you should not use electric scissors when you're holding a piece of paper, as, uh, hold, holding a piece of fabric as well, because it comes out wobbly. Um, but yeah, that bias binding method was absolutely fantastic so fast. And I will film another video to show you how I made that. Um, so looking at my little diagram now, I've added in the um, channel that the ties are going to go into um, and that channel there is going to be the bias binding that I've made. Um, so I remembered after I spoke to you guys, I talked you through the diagram. Um, I remembered that I'd have to make bias binding and at first I was a bit like, oh God, I really don't want to make bias binding. I put it off um, for every scenario um, and every sewing project that I do but actually that new method that I've made absolutely amazing um, and I don't even think I'll need half of that bias binding that I've made um, in order to do this but I've got some left over then haven't I um, and I might also use some up here I'm going to make a little loop that I will put the ties through obviously I would have already showed you what this open looks like at the start so it should all be quite clear as to what I'm trying to describe here um, and then obviously I've also got my loops that my I can't remember what they're called but you know like the catches that I showed you um so they'll also probably be out the bias binding as well um but yeah so I can oh I also need a pocket as well don't I okay I'll go and cut that out quickly do I want a pocket no I don't think I'm going to bother with a pocket so that's scrapped um yeah can't bother to do a pocket um but let's get sewing this together first things first I'm going to grab both of these pieces of fabric so the main pieces of the apron um, and I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm just going to sew them around this bit here. I don't need to do the top because um, that will allow me to flip it and that will be up inside the waistband anyway. Um, so yeah, just this bit all the way around here, around the edge, um, about quarter inch, three eighths inch seam allowance, something like that. So I get that done first. So I've sewn it, um, so all the way around this edge, and then I've just snipped, I could have taken some more excess off that, but I'm not going to. Um, I've just snipped around the corner bits, um, just so that it turns a little bit easier. So I'm now gonna shove my hand inside, flip it round. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I thought my Peter Rabbits are upside down then. Will they? Oh, they sort of will be, won't they? Because oh. when I turn it, oh, that's annoying. Because they're the right way up that way. So when that bit's against my body, they're the right way up. And then when I turn it and ruche it, they'll be upside down. I'm not that bothered, to be quite honest. That's annoying. I should have thought that through and done them upside down. To the way that feels right um so what i'm gonna do next um i really should give this a press so i think i'm gonna give it a press just to make sure these edges are nice and neat um i'm going to uh pop in my loops i think decide where i want them um for my little clasps to go because they will be at the front um add in my loop in the middle that the ties will be attached to and then it will be a case of doing the waistband. Um, so I will just take my webbing, because this is nice and strong, wrap it around that waist belt, 
and sew it in place um, and then when I do that I will also catch the top of this so that where we've still got that raw edge I will catch that within my waist belt to finish it off nicely that nicely um, so yeah that's the next job to do so just wanted to update you as to where I'm at um, I've now uh, ironed this edge here I have put this here which will have the ties go through it and then I've added these bits at the top for my anything I want to hang and then what I'm doing now I've actually clipped it on the wrong side so let me just switch that over but basically what I'm doing now is I'm just sorting out my bias binding um, for my cord or trim or ties whatever it is I decide to put through there um, they are going to go along this edge here so I folded the edges in and ironed them and then I'm just going to place them around this edge and stitch them down one stitch either side very close to the edge and then I'll thread my tie through and that's going to go all the way to the top this end is the top and then when I add the waistband or the tie um, it'll encase that raw edge in so let me get that done I'm now working on the waist belt so I've got this is the right side this is the wrong side I've got my webbing and I've just sewn it all the way into the wrong side then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it fold it it's hard to do whilst I'm holding it up this edge will come in to make it neat and that one will come down like that so this is what it'll look like but a little bit neater but when I sew it I'll also put in that top edge of my apron will go up in here and then I'll sew that down along this edge here and then that will capture that raw edge of my apron and it'll also finish this waist belt at the same time so I'm going to do that first and then I'll show you what it looks like nearly there which is good because I've been hungry for about the past hour that I've been doing this um but the waist belt is on so that's now nicely sewn and I've captured that top of the apron in there as I've been doing it so I need to add my buckles onto the end um also because I'd added these hooks before I did the waistband that's captured them in there as well and then this bias around the edge so what I did was I sewed all the way down this side first really close to the edge I then added in my rope tie that I'm going to be using this is just some macrame rope put that in under the fabric and then I sewed really closely to the edge again on this side making sure that I definitely didn't trap any of that rope inside and then what happens now is this is now a drawstring okay so nearly done literally just need to add my buckle and my adjuster um, and I won't lie I do need to google this every single time because I get so confused as to how to attach it um, without like getting it stuck because you then need to be able to like pull it to adjust it and make it a different size and things like that and I just can't do it from memory so I'll google it add it in um, they will go um, either end of my waist ties in here and then we're done and we are done so we've got the buckle at the back we've got the adjuster and then got all of my loops where's my big one there so I can hang my tools and things let me just pull this I do want to wash this um, if I can just to try and soften this um, plaid fabric because it does make it a little bit harder to pull the drawstrings but that's why I didn't put the bias binding right up to the edge because you've then also got the thickness like the bulk of the seams on the inside um, so that if I just bring it inside it might make it easier to gather um, but yeah so we tie those up like that put one through there that one through there And 
then I've got a produce bag. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy with it. So that will collect all of my goodies from the allotment. Um, as I said, I can adjust it, um, which will become quite useful. Let me just, let me just sit down. Um, it will become quite useful to have the adjuster on it because obviously today I've just got a lightweight dress on. Um, and look at that, it will protect my clothes as well. Let me see. Um, yeah, so it's got the adjuster on the side, which is going to be really useful. At the moment, it's sort of the tightest um, that it can go by apart from about half an inch. Um, but actually the reason that I want to be able to make it bigger is because today I've got a really lightweight summer dress on, um, really, really lightweight, but other days I might have a hoodie on or I might have a jacket or a coat, whatever. It depends obviously on the weather. Um, so today is pretty much going to be the smallest that it needs to be. And then other days it might go over a jumper or, you know, whatever. Um, pair of dungarees, something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, let me just take it off. Another thing is that it's so easy to get on and off. There's not any ties. Just got those clips at the back. Um, there's my adjuster there. So literally apart from this tiny little bit here, it's on the smallest it'll go. Um, that back fabric. All of these bits. So this is where I put my string through to tie it up. And then all of these, which will hang just bits and pieces off. Um, which would be so useful. I don't even know what they're for yet, but I know that they'll be useful. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, so thank you for joining me. I hope that that was okay. I don't usually tend to do tutorial videos because um, to be quite honest with you, they're really hard work to sew, uh, to film um, and sew at the same time because I get all caught up in what I'm doing and I forget to film the next bit. Um, but yeah, I hope that was okay and I hope you've got the gist of what it is that I was doing. If you are looking to make your own um, and something wasn't quite clear, then do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to describe what I did. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it and actually I really like this fabric now. Um, it's really hard wearing and obviously we've got the trim of all of the Peter Rabbit bits as well and then when it goes up, you see the Peter Rabbit bits. I love it. I love it way more than I expected to actually, considering I'm really hungry um, and want to go and eat my lunch. <laughs> I'm really happy that I've got this done and not rushed it too much. Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining me in today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching um, and I will catch you in the next one. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, and I will be back with another video um, which might possibly be trying to sort out my wardrobe and finding something that is my style, finding things that I like that are my style. Um, as you can see at the minute, sewing things that aren't clothes um, just whilst I'm trying to work out exactly what it is that I want to use my fabric for. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye!